to us, it was a really funny idea. And it also... It's kind of a bold topic, you know, just talking about death and especially having that bold title. Yeah, the knowledge of our death creates an immediacy that is going to force us into kind of tighter spaces within ourselves, force us to really look at things that maybe we're ignoring or avoiding. All right. Well, here we are. We've got Meta Marcy here. We're talking about death, music, tarot, uh, lots of beautiful cosmic and uh, artistic subjects. And yeah, why don't we uh, talk a little bit about the tarot okay. and where your concept came from when you brought up this podcast? Okay. Yeah. So um, I've been a full-time professional tarot card reader for maybe the last 10 years or so. I've been reading cards since maybe 2002. And um, I've been, where the title, You're Definitely Gonna Die, came from was any, any kind of street fair or public event where the person, where maybe the audience is not necessarily used to tarot card readers, or tarot card readings. Um, people come up and the two things they say is, oh, you know, are you psychic? Are you psychic? What am I thinking? Tell me what I'm thinking if, I'm psych if you're so psychic. And then the other thing they say is, am I going to die? Or don't tell me I'm going to die. Or when am I going to die? They're, like Those are the two things that immediately come to everyone's mind. So for a little while I had a sign that said, I don't care what you're thinking and you're definitely going to die. <laughs> and it was like, I can just nip this in the bud if yeah. we just start there. Just disclaimer. Don't care what you're thinking, you're definitely going to die. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, we were looking at starting a podcast uh, just as a, as a way of me kind of connecting with more people. Um, finding new like ways of exchange, you know, new new kind of outlets um, for all the stuff that I'm doing, and so you're definitely gonna die came up as the the obvious title mm. um, for that for that project. And I remember when I first heard this title, I was like, "Whoa, that's like a powerful mantra," you know, like okay, you could take it so many different ways. Yeah, and, and you had written that. So Marcy had a kind of like a post in describing it was a uh, music uh, you needed a song contest. for your pod podcast. Yeah. And so you talked about Carpe Diem, like you know, seize the day, you're definitely gonna die, kind of thing. Yeah. Which is kind of like the more obvious answer. And then what was it? You had a couple others. Like it, like this is definitely gonna be a failure. Like there like there's no way you're gonna get through whatever you're doing without failing and then uh like the idea of dying laughing you know you're gonna mm. die and then also it's so funny you're gonna die yeah, you're gonna die. <laughs> and then also there was um um i guess this is going back to being a failure but you know i worked with comedians for a long time and to die on stage is you did really poorly and no one mm. laughed like you just died like mm. whatever um whatever happened didn't go well you know so when you're when you're a comedian you're doing well and people are laughing you're killing and if they're not laughing, you're dying. <laughs> you're dying. It's pretty extreme for comedy. That is. And then, um, and then I also think of like you know, oh my God, you are gonna die when I tell you what happened. Mm. This, this idea of, um, like a trend, like death as a transition point, like something big is gonna change once this other thing goes down. I also think it's great that like we all know we're going to die like that that's it is you know, they have the joke that paying taxes and dying are like the, <laughs> the two certainties and i mean it's interesting to me that the statement you're definitely going to die can be really shocking even though it's a known truth it's like this known truth that goes unspoken yeah what if it's like you're definitely going to pay taxes <laughs> or like well okay you know, i'm willing to accept that yeah yeah, it's something that I think is below a lot of our our fears in every day. Intentionally. Like, we're like, I'm gonna... Yeah, and it's like, you know, something's definitely gonna happen. Like, why am I being, like, so fearful of it? I might as well embrace this thing. And this is, this is kind of why I felt so inspired to create this song, was in actually inspiring people to look at death. And, like, because we kind of shy away from it. We tuck those graveyards behind the hills, and, you know, we don't talk about it. But I think it's a wonderful thing to talk about, and we all should embrace it. You know, in a lot of other cultures, it's it's a kind of like 
a part of their tradition. Yeah, and it's one of those things that becomes a lot less scary when you just are like, yeah, like if you can cultivate an easy acceptance of it, think of what that changes, right? Where um, we spend so much of our energy trying to stay safe and trying to keep from being hurt and trying to like protect something that is so temporary, so impermanent that, you know, I think for me anyway, like the owning of, well, you're gonna die. Mm. It's like, well, okay, that's like the worst thing that could happen is you're gonna die. And that's, that's already a fact. So what can we move around with or play with between now and then that like the, so the knowledge of our, our inevitable death can give us courage to do more between now and then. Right. We, we're, there's a finite aspect to our being here. Yeah, we are limited as far as we are in this physical plane. Yeah. And it's like, if we think about what we do every day, you know, we, some of us might be like lounging out, like, you know, just experiencing wonder and in total bliss. But a lot of us are running around trying to do all these things. Um, you know, we've got appointments, we've got goals, we've got... Yeah. And it's not such a bad thing because we're here to create and have fun and experience the world and express consciousness. And there's projects and we get creativity and ideas. So we're here to like create things. And I think when we start to give ourselves a deadline, you know, even with like, if you think about projects where you're like, oh, well, I got to get this done by Monday. Somehow it magically gets it's done, done by Monday. Yeah. 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 So we give ourselves like, you know, go there, you know, I'm, what if I died tomorrow? What are the, how would I like to look back on my life and kind of say like, wow, I'm really happy with what I did with my life and like what yeah. I was up to and like, you know, think about what people might say about you at your funeral. You know, these are big questions where it's like, hey, like I want to leave this world, left, leave the world better than I uh, came here. Yeah, and also like if, if we buy into the idea that we have a purpose or a mission, and feel connected to that it's like have I am I doing that am I working could I die at a point where and know that I've worked as hard as I possibly could toward that purpose or mm-hmm. with that purpose in mind and, and we're not just putting it off till later that some other day I'm going to I think I think that is the knowledge of our death creates an immediacy that is going to force us into um, kind of tighter spaces within ourselves and force us to really look at things that maybe we're ignoring or avoiding um, I think uh, it's just it was to uh, to me to us it was a really funny idea, and it also it's kind of a bold uh, yeah topic you know just talking about death and especially having that bold uh, title yeah and it very much encapsulates my relationship to the world and um, how I read and it's it's such a thing that I would say. Mm-hmm. It's you such say a, read, read tarot. When I read tarot, yeah. yeah. It's such a thing that um, that would come out of my mouth. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely going to die. Because <laughs> it's, it's, again, it's this naked truth that no one's speaking. Right. And it seems very important to be like, you know that, right? Like, we know this. We're not going to pretend that we don't know this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's, there's so much, like, here in this wonderful gem. And it's like, I also want to bring to light, you know, there's the whole, like, part before death. And then there's after death, which we're fearing all along. Yeah. And what we've seen is a lot of these NDEers, near-death experiencers, they go and they have these experiences and they come back reluctantly. You know, they're like, well, I have the choice, I'm coming out of this coma, or whatever it might be, and I gotta take care of Gramps, or I gotta take care of, you know, I know my, my brother's flying in from Italy to come to me, to see me before I die, so I gotta come back. Um, and a side note, Anita Morjani, she had the, she had like 14, years of cancer or something i don't know the details but she was like she has a profound story she has a book called you're uh dying to be me and i think death strips away everything that isn't truly us right so it's a teacher and what she learned was that when she came back she didn't have to prove herself anymore she just loved herself and she loved everyone around her and that was like the game shifter that allowed the cancer in her body to just totally wow. remediate and go away and it's astounded doctors they didn't know what to write in her you know she had this like transformation you know from the messages from behind the veil so yeah. i think 
there's this beauty to it, you know? There's this beauty to crossing over, and a lot of us fear it, but it's actually a profound, wonderful, beautiful experience that a lot of people come back reluctantly. And uh, Yeah, and yeah. The, just the idea of death, um, it, it misinterprets life. Like, there's a misunderstanding of what life is. So when we're in life and we're like, this is all it is, the idea of death is terrifying or... Um, mm -hmm. Like, it feels like it's the end of something. Um, but when we look at life in terms of it's a temporary moment of expression in a certain way and is part of a larger string of, like, movements through aspects of consciousness, it takes on a whole new meaning. You know, it really is just a transition point. Mm. Um, and and the, I think the, the more we cling to life or the more we cling to safety or whatever it is that we're clinging to, uh, the the more that reveals a, a profound misinterpretation of what's going on. Sure. You know, what's happening. Yeah. It's like that turning over of, of a new leaf. And we see in nature all around us, like things, right, we're approaching fall now, things are starting to mm -hmm. die. And we're, we're approaching winter where things get preserved. And then in the spring, we have this like wonderful kind of like um, rebirth. Yeah. And so we're no different. We're no. We're not apart from this experience and this process. And it's kind of like we're making room for other souls. And then when we come back into the oversoul and, and on the other side, just experiencing oneness, complete bliss of eternity. Yeah. You know, as Andrew Cohen said, you're in this ball of like bliss. You know, before the Big Bang, it was like just experiencing eons and eons and trillions of eons of like just profound bliss and beauty. It's like okay, well, this is great. You know, but. It's a little boring. Like, yeah, what I always think like? of that, that like, the, that, the, that the world exists as we know it because it got boring. It, it, it being needed in to like express. a state of ease and perfection. How can yeah. I be creative, you know? So we're here to have fun and paint and be in the journey of life and yeah. learn. And uh, Brian Weiss at this workshop was saying, you know, mm -hmm. there's only certain, so many lessons we can learn not in physical form when we come into physical form there's like a, a whole other palette that are very teaching. specific to being in physical form we can only yeah. learn them that way yeah it's the curriculum here so, <laughs> yeah <laughs> great wonderful yeah so why don't we talk a little bit more about the tarot and and your experience how you got into it or okay um well i mean the big thing is that the one of you can't really separate the idea of death from tarot it's one of the cards in the tarot card deck so card number 13 is called the death card. And it's one of those where every person that gets it, or nearly every person that gets it, has some kind of dramatic, fearful reaction. And the job of the tarot reader is to say everything that we've just said, you know? Um, I'm, I met, meeting my tarot teacher was kind of like a death point in my life. You know, I was listening to your song and I love where you say you're gonna have to die before you die. Mm. It's exactly that, you just die over and over again. Um, but I met my teacher, I had, I was miserable. I was in a, a rough time in my life and um, didn't have a lot of money and didn't know what I was gonna do for my, just didn't know what I was gonna do. I was sick a lot, I just wasn't feeling well, I was depressed. I was living in the projects with my um, son who was maybe five at the time, something like that. And um, I, I like used my last money to get a tarot card reading. Like that was my like, I was like, well, I don't know what else to do mm, wow. and I'd, I'd been kind of interested I'd met this girl um, and she and I would like get we got tarot cards and we're kind of playing around with them together before that in a very kind of light mellow way it wasn't a lot of like actual study or anything but so I called up this guy I found a um, strange little business card that had just like symbols and then a handwritten phone number and then just a psychic advisor on it or something. it was just like um, and he became my teacher, his name is Ron Goldman, and um, he, the first reading that we did, it just, something shifted. And then um, I was like, I gotta do this again. And he was like, you gotta do this again. And so he did a thing where he charged me $5 per reading and I would go see him like once a week or every other week. And then he started, he was like, I think I'm gonna offer a class. And I, and like, it was this, there was no part of my, like my, the mind that I identify as mine that was like, I want to do tarot card reading or anything. Mm. It was more like, I have to do that. Like Something you know else that, was yeah. guiding, yeah. Yeah, that feeling of like, that's a thing. And like, it's like coming out of my mouth before I even realize it. Mm. And so I started working with him. We worked together for like a year. 
um, we would get together. We would. He taught me tarot, but also palmistry, astrology, numerology, like various Buddhist teachings, how to meditate. And his big like talking point to me was that I didn't love myself. Mm. And so it's a big one for a lot yeah. of people. And so he kind of got that ball rolling. Just just the idea that I sh- that I didn't and that I should. But it wasn't like prior to that. It wasn't even a concept. It didn't. I just knew that when he said it, it, it like I didn't like when he said it. <laughs> I didn't like sure, when he yeah. like it kind of made me feel bad. Mm-hmm. Um, I think because it was true and it was really painful. Um, and then yeah, I worked with him for a little while, and I learned a, a ton. He was really just one of those like odd mystical people. Mm-hmm. Like he would do psychic readings for strangers in the grocery store line, <laughs> and I kind of felt like the daughter that was like. <laughs> so embarrassing but it was amazing mm-hmm. he was really incredible and then uh, my next teacher Christiana Godet uh, she was and is a like a really really talented tarot businesswoman a really talented super skillful reader and um, in many ways is the opposite of him like she was very accessible and um, kind of had he had this he'd be like Meet me at the tea shop, and then we're going to go to the art gallery, and then we're going to go teach yoga to old people at a convalescent home. Like, mm-hmm. I just, I never knew what I was going to get, but if, like, she offered a class, it'd be in a workshop space, and there'd be other people there, and you'd pay a certain amount, and you'd get exactly what she said she was going to offer. So it was this right. really two totally different ways of looking at the world, and their, their uh, ways of interpreting the cards were very different. I mean... They obviously, like, they both were reading the same cards and there were um, areas of of accessibility and overlap, overlap, but, you know, they would, the way that they would present it was just night and day. And that got me to a place where I started to have a very broad spectrum of how I could interpret each card. Sure. sure. Um, But when I first started reading, it wasn't really, it wasn't like a career move Mm -hmm. or anything. It was, it was absolutely a spiritual calling. Um... It was like a, an imperative, just like, and also a, um, a blessing, a major blessing of, um, here, you'll never be alone, you'll never be hungry, you'll never be, you know, totally destitute, mm. you'll always have something if you have this. And mm. that's what they are to me. It's like, I, I've eaten when I had no money, I've, um, it's made me, I've made friends and met people, it's given me creative ideas, um, it's everything that I have that exists in my life, I kind of owe to these cards wow. at this point. And it's not the cards. It, there's always someone that's quick to remind me. I'm just gonna. I know um, that there are pieces of paper with writing sure. on them. Yeah. Like I, I know that, and yeah. I'm not in any way implying that they aren't. Um, but the, it's more about the system and kind of the entity that it holds. Yeah. Um, that mm-hmm. has been profound for me. Yeah, and it's like. You know, you might kind of expand on this, but my own interpretation of the way the card, you know, because it's occurring, just as dream symbols, you know, yeah. you see dream symbols occur, and it's like, okay, well, this is happening for a reason, you know, consciousness has manifested it. How is this meaningful? And if it's not exactly pertinent or particularly directly relevant, how can I find a space in my psychology or my spirit that might be open to learning from right. this? And yeah. so we not only use it in dream symbology, but also in waking symbology. Yeah. What and might this mean? Exactly. And that's that's sort of like what the tarot has done for me has been like you're living in a dream. Mm. And here are some tools to understanding that, why it's that way. Not why it's that way, but like the ways in which it reveals itself as being that. Um, and the, the overlap. It's given, it's like a map to everything. Uh, I love and that. tarot card readings are like, tiny little icing on the cake they're fun to do but it's more the way that it's um like intercepted my consciousness and restructured it sure yeah and that's massive that's colossal that's like you know we can practice um yoga and that not only gets you better at yoga it gets you better at uh mindfulness there's a whole array of things you get better at tennis you might get better at tennis Mm -hmm. you get better at meditation Whole, your whole experience gets it's just like wow yeah so these are this is like baseline foundational stuff that kind of expounds and extrapolates on our human experience yeah 
and, and so on. Oh, wow. it's brilliant, it's amazing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so let's, let's, um, let's wrap up and just kind of, I guess the thing with the tarot, the podcast, mm -hmm. where this originated, when I wrote the song, well, we didn't personally know each other. No. Yeah, and I wrote the song, and then I'm here, I came up to Omega, and then we crossed paths, and now we're making this video, so it's kind of like this interesting really sequence neat of thing events. how it how it all yeah. comes together and the other thing was just that um my like my love is art when people ask what i do or what i am i'm say i'm an artist mm. I, and i am a visual artist but it's more like rather than hanging out with spiritual people i want to hang out with artists because i think artists are like the most spiritual people do you mm. know what i mean um where it's like it's not about trying to go find god it's about like i'm i'm like letting that come talk to me mm. and then creating from that space mm. and um, I just find that so much more interesting than the person who's like trying to be spiritual sure you know what I, mean? I understand and so one of the amazing like parts of putting the podcast together and putting out that contest or that kind of like call for art um, the song based on that the title was just watching everybody interpret it so differently so we have we have to figure out what we're doing with the podcast um, yeah. because it definitely got put on hold it's not dead it's not gone um, <laughs> pun intended <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh, because the, like there are just so many we decided that it couldn't be a contest like none was like better or worse than any other um, they were all everyone was amazing and and watching just the different all the sound songs sound different all the mm. songs um, some are funny, some are poignant, some are, one is like a death metal song, you know? So, um, I, that was one of the most amazing, even if that's the only thing that happened was all these songs came out and we found a way to share them with people. Yeah, make a little playlist. Like that, yeah. that would almost do it, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but I, I love, I love your song, I love that you decided to contribute, it's really neat to like meet you now after mm. like having that as our background um yeah i really appreciate like just putting that out there as a request like hey like we need a song for this purpose yeah and i think it inspired something in me you know because as an artist we kind of lose track sometimes and make oh this sounds cool or like this is a you know but to actually make a song for a mission a purpose and direct cause yeah it's like oh wow this is there's another energy to this yeah i've always been like even since i was a kid i always liked things like writing prompts Mm -hmm. and um, like or collaborative stories where you have to take what's there and really like tighten it into something and I, I that was really fun mm -hmm. really, to come up with that mm -hmm. so the podcast it'll happen something's happening there it'll happen it's just taking a little we're just working it out but yeah it'll happen everything that happens is the best possible thing that can happen <laughs> <laughs> I think that sounds like a great note to add <laughs> So thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. <laughs> yeah, it's just such a pleasure. And yeah. Do you know the Omega hand hug? Omega hand So put your other hand up and then our, our thumbs hug each other. Oh. It's a little hand <laughs> hug. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> thank thank you, you so much. Yeah.